Hello and welcome to the Enigmatic Bubble. My name is Marin and today I will look at The Fantastic Mr. Burn. This is a review of Fantastic Four number 232. When I was a kid, John Byrne was the best comic book artist ever. Now I'm coming back to these old titles and rereading them to see how they hold up. John Byrne has contributed to some of the most popular comic book storylines of all time, including the X-Men stories, Dark Phoenix saga, and Days of Future Past. He also had an exceptional run writing and drawing the Fantastic Four, which included the trial of Reed Richards after he saved the life of Galactus. In the 1980s, he also revitalized DC's flagship character, Superman. Coming into the comics profession as a penciler, Byrne began co-plotting the X-Men comics during his run on them and launched his writing career with Fantastic Four, where he started inking his own pencil art. In the mid-80s, Byrne's depictions of Marvel characters became their distinct canonic look across the whole company. He probably reached the zenith of his fame in the second half of the 80s, when he assumed control over the Superman franchise. During the 1990s, he produced a number of creator-owned comics, including Next Men and Danger Unlimited. He scripted the first issues of Mike Mignola's Hellboy series and produced a number of Star Trek comics for IDW. John Byrne's five-year run on Fantastic Four spans from July 1981 to August 1986. It is generally considered a second golden age for the title. Starting a decade after the original creators Stan Lee and Jack Kirby stopped working together on their very first great creation, Byrne said his goal was to turn the clock back, get back and see fresh what it was that made the book great at its inception. The Fantastic Four were originally not a true super superhero team. They were explorers, scientific adventurers. Sure, they had suits and primary colors, but they were not from the form-fitting lycra-like material that stretches over a muscular physique as was typical for superheroes in general. They were more akin to the workmanlike overalls worn by technicians and explorers. Before John Byrne took over the Fantastic Four, they weren't all that great. Despite the efforts of some talented creators, the book drifted very far into superhero territory. The brainy Reed Richards started to look like a bodybuilder with graying hair. Johnny Storm, the brash youth, resembled a square-jawed athlete. Susan Richards was very much stuck in the role of the good wife of the 1960s and was commonly used as a typical damsel in distress. And worst of all, Ben Grimm, the thing, had started to look like a cuddly rock teddy bear instead of being ugly and thus comprehensively self-loathing. John Byrne subtly started to revert the Fantastic Four to their original incarnations in his very first full issue of the series. Fantastic Four 232 was titled Back to Basics. This issue brought back the Four's longtime foe Diablo with a plan to exact revenge on them by mystically bringing to life elemental statues he had stolen and using them to get rid of our heroes. He cleverly sent each of the four elementals, earth, water, wind and fire, after a member of the team the most unsuited to handle its particular attack. Sue Richards was attacked by a monstrous behemoth made of earth, which tried encasing her in an earthen tomb. Ben Grimm was attacked by a water elemental that surrounded the thing with a watery bubble, thus preventing him from breathing and cheating him out of a physical foe to use his monstrous strength against. Johnny Storm, the human torch, got ambushed by a windy air elemental whilst meeting up with his girlfriend Frankie Ray and was knocked unconscious. Reed Richards, also known as Mr. Fantastic, was the last of the team attacked and his opponent came in the form of a fire elemental. Thanks to his smarts, Reed was able to escape his foe, figure out what was going on and eventually meet up with the rest of the team. Realizing who was actually behind the plot, Reed called on Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange, and was able to capture Diablo at the end of the issue. Overall, this was a very basic beginning to Burns' run on the book, presumably hence the title, Back to Basics, and had a very Stan Lee Jack Kirby early Fantastic Four feel to it. A nice kickoff to a historic run on the Fantastic Four. All in all, Fantastic Four number 232 was simple on the surface, but once you regard it in detail, it was surprisingly intricate and full of characterization. A great kickoff to the perfect Fantastic Four run.